Welcome, Jared here from soundguitarlessons.com. What you just heard there in the beginning of the lesson was the right hand chord rolling technique, where instead of playing a chord all at once with the fingers, we roll them from the lowest note up to the highest note. It's a very wonderful expressive technique to use when playing in a finger style or classical uh, genre on the guitar. And in this video, we're going to talk about how to improve your right hand chord rolling or get started at all. I have a series of exercises that we're going to do that are really fun to play and sound nice as we're doing it to get you feeling very confident about this technique of rolling with your right hand. Uh, let's dive into it. Now I should say here that I play classical guitar without nails and I have a series about that. I'll put a link in the description to my series about playing classical guitar without nails which is kind of documenting my journey of transitioning from playing nails. So it's a, kind of a cool series if you're interested in that. But the reason I want to point it out here is that it makes no difference to the technique of specifically chord rolling, whether or not we're using nails, finger picks. Uh, also, I used to use finger picks that simulate nails. I'll put a link to a video about that in the description as well. But whatever technique, nails, no nails, finger picks, the chord rolling technique itself is the same. Uh, you know, how we attack the strings will be different, but once you know how you're attacking the strings, the rest of it is the same. And this exercise series will benefit you no matter how you are choosing to pluck the strings, you know, what method you are using. So let's dive right into it. I have uh, two chords that I want us to play, and we're going to use these two chords through a scale that sounds very, very lovely. It's almost like it's basically like something you would find in a little classical etude book to work on specific techniques uh, while making it musical at the same time. So the first thing that I want you to do, this is exercise one in this series, is that I want us to have a C chord, and we're going to do a series of chords here, but the right hand is going to plant all of the fingers on the middle four strings, thumb, index, middle, ring, P-I-M-A, you're going to plant your fingers so they're secure and ready to go. This is a very important right hand technique to get a secure, consistent tone. I've talked about it a lot before. You're going to plant them and then you're going to go pluck, 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 pluck in time. And then you're going to mute and plant again and roll. Okay, so we're going to go one, two, three, four. Okay, that's the exercise for the right hand is going to be repeating that for this first version of the exercise. So one and two and three. On three you plant again and then on four you roll. So this is very important because we're securing a plant, we're plucking in time, pluck, 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 pluck to make sure those all sound good and then we're going to do it rapid. And we have a whole beat to plant and secure ourselves and then mute it. Now very important thing for me to say here is that the roll, the challenging thing about the roll is that the melody is the point of it. And you're rolling into a melody note, even if you're playing accompaniment, you're thinking of the top note as the arrival point of the beat. So you're starting the roll early. So you're going one and two and three. Beat four was this note. And these notes rolled into it early. So it's ra. You're landing four, or the beat, right? So your roll, this is one of the most confusing things about it. It should happen intuitively, but just in case it's not, you don't want to start your thumb playing the roll on the beat. You start your other ones early and they roll into it. Okay, so it's like this, this uh, almost like if you're a pick player at all, sweeping and raking into a note or something, you'd cut, you, you're doing, you're adding, basically you're adding grace notes before a note, and they just happen to be arpeggiating, arpeggiating a chord. Okay, so you want to do that with C, and then we want to do that with G7. This is G7 over B, so this is going to be middle finger, third finger, open G, pinky on the third fret, uh, second string. Same thing, just repeat it. Okay, we're going to do another chord shape of C. Okay, the next C shape is this. We're skipping the D string. Okay, so what we're playing is a scale. We have the first C, then we have the G7, then we have another C. Ah, oh, we're playing a scale. So now here's C where you're playing third finger, skip string four, and then open G, first finger on this C here, and then open E. Okay, so same exercise. Pluck, 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 plant, roll, pluck, 
plug, 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 plant, roll, okay? That's very strategic because you want to feel this is what a good plant feels like, this is what a good note sounds like, and now let me try to roll it. The roll should be just as, you know, the same tone you get. Up the scale, we're going to keep going. This is G7 again. We have our middle finger here. We're skipping the D string again. We're playing open G. We're playing pinky on string two, fret three, and then first finger here. G dominant seven with the flat seven on the top. You just want to do this with all these chords. It's just a right hand thing, but it's nice to do it through different uh, formations with the left hand or the or your fretting hand if you happen to be left handed. Okay, next note of the scale is C again, and you're gonna play C, open G, C again with the first finger, and then pinky up on fret three top string. Okay, next note in the scale is gonna be this. We're going up one, two, three, four, five. We're on five of the scale, and we're gonna play a C again. C root, open G, another C with the first finger, and then pinky on fret three top string. You're just doing all of these independently from each other. And by now, your right hand should be feeling very secure doing that. This is one of the secrets to repetitive exercises is we want to do what I call repetition with manipulation or repetition with variation, either way, where we're repeating here over and over and over again and to keep ourselves interested and musical and, and have it be kind of a multifaceted exercise, we're changing things over here. So we're not just going like this forever which is actually perfectly fine to do if you can sustain your interest in doing that and just focus 100% on the right hand. And if you're really struggling with the right hand part of it, then that is something you should do before adding this in, okay? But this allows us to last a lot longer because we're like, ooh, how does that chord sound? How does that chord sound? So uh, ways to investigate these things. This is hard to do for an hour. It is possible. But when you start adding chords over here, you can really do it for a long time and get it down. Let's go on to, so that's that's exercise number one, is to do that individually on each of those chords. Exercise number two is to do the exact same thing, but do one measure of each chord. So now we're gonna go. In time. down very nice we just harmonized a one two three four five four three two one of C major with the one and the five chord in this we should feel musical it should feel very nice that is exercise number two really take your time with that step number three is that we're going to choose a melody or a song or a tune it can be something you're working on, and if in doubt, just use what I'm gonna use here. And I'm gonna do the melody of Itsy Bitsy Spider in this little area that we just worked out. Okay, now I'm gonna maybe leave out some notes just to make it kind of a watered down version. So we're just working on the chord transitions and the roll. Uh, but let's do it without the roll first, and then we'll add the roll, okay? And that'll be our last step. So it's gonna be one, 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 two, three, three, and for the melody here, for working this out, I want you to play the chord on beats one and three, and the melody as the melody, but play the chord on beats one and three. So that's beat three. Here's beat one. Okay. And the melody, just, you can just think of it as repeating those two things for our case. So I'll show it to you, I'll explain in more detail Detail here. Even though it might go the five, one, 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 we're just gonna go one, 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 two, three. Okay, so easy enough, we just have our C chord. And then you play your pinky for the next melody note, and I lift this off, that's good technique to not hold that down when you're not using it. So, And then chord, this is our chord from our scale exercise, where you're skipping the, the uh, fourth string. And now we switch to this chord that is the G7 with the D as the highest note, the pinky as the highest note on string two. 
and then you go do, 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 do. you're using those two and notice I'm lifting them off you obviously have to lift the pinky off to play this one but when I play back on the pinky I lift this off again just reiterating that point so we got and then open E and then down to the regular C okay next for part of the phrase the C with the open E on top first finger moves to this F note here um, and then this voicing that we worked out so okay now G7 with the with the F the flat 7 on top okay open E pinky moves to this and then RC with the three on top. That's if you repeat that, you're playing, you know, the tune. Um, and I love playing just simple. I love finding like simple, uh, like children's melodies and stuff, just stuff that's in our heads and and making sure that I know what the harmony is. And it's just so delightful to have some of that um, in our repertoire, if you will. So once you work that out without rolling and you're just playing a chord on B1 and three, okay, and I'll play that again as a demonstration. any song you want instead this is just so we take it all the way again i'm thinking of it as like if this was in a little exercise book we want to make music out of it so do it slower than that if you need to now we're going to roll on every beat one and you're still going to play the chord on beat three but you're not going to roll on beat three so it's going to be like this played it kind of in the form of what it would be but those two phrases that we worked on are all there are it's kind of like an a a b a structure again that's just to take it to applying it musically apply it wherever you want the first exercise and the second exercise are really the true exercises that work on this and just for fun we're adding it to a lovely little little children's melody and why not it's nice to hear it in the context of real music that we're familiar with if you've never done rolling chords before with your right hand or if you have and you just need to tune them up again those first two exercises will absolutely do the trick give it time let it take you know many many practice sessions if you need to but that should make your rolls nice and secure and consistent and help you use it expressively as it's meant to be used which if you choose to you know apply it to a piece of music in specific places at first like here we said do it on beat one every time after you get used to it you're just going to naturally roll the chord where it feels good to you and that's kind of the point of the technique to have it that comfortable for ourselves to just use it when we want to feel something add those grace notes before the melody note if you want some solo guitar arrangement music to work on where you can apply the chord rolling with your right hand i have a free solo guitar arrangement pack with a bunch of uh, arrangements in it some of them are kind of advanced and some of them are very easy and beginner like the bach minuet that's a famous minuet melody uh, can be really fun to work on your solo guitar arrangement technique tabs and notation are available in all of those arrangements and uh, yeah you can download it for free with the link in the top of the description or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com moon to get it there if you're not a hundred percent a classical or finger style player where you're only playing with your fingers maybe you are playing with a pick and using a little bit of hybrid or you're interested in hybrid if that is the case then next i recommend checking out my hybrid tutorial my hybrid picking tutorial that which is kind of an ultimate guide with several exercises for how to work on hybrid technique and rolling chords is one of the things we should be able to do uh, with a hybrid technique so check that out if you want to there's a link on the screen here if you're watching on youtube otherwise there's a link in the description where you can get to it there i post a new lesson video every week next week i'll be talking about improvising over a common one six two five jazz progression and a bunch of amazing tips for how to navigate something like that when the chord changes are moving very fast so if you're interested in that hope to see you in that lesson next week take care thank you for watching and happy practicing